All right, so let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, Hans. My name is Claudio, and I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, from the students in Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Hans Dieter Schmidt accepted our invitation to our show. Hans, welcome to the show, man. Hi, Claudio. Thank you for the inviting. Hey, no problem. So let's go to the beginning. This year has been very weird with the pandemic, and people cannot tour. People cannot go that much. People are taking the vaccine. Some people don't believe in the vaccine. Whatever. How is this? The pandemic and COVID uh, has affected your your life, your music, your inability to tour or go out that much, and so on and so forth. Well, the experience I had were very different. Wearing a mask and the reduction of social social contacts felt very strange. Normally. Uh, we have a meeting of the people of Electro Cartel every month, and uh, with the lockdown, we couldn't meet uh, uh, together. On the other hand, we had the chance to enjoy nature, and it sounds again. Listening to birds without the noises of cars and airplanes are very beautiful. Uh, yeah. I'm living nearby Frankfurt Airport, and normally you wake up with the sound of the airplanes, and now you wake up with the sound of the birds. It's very, very beautiful. Yeah. Um, that was one of the good things of the COVID restriction. Almost um, everyone who makes music had less opportunities to perform, perform live, and so had I. But at least I could realize uh, three streaming concerts, one with um, Bernd Michael Land, a famous um, electronic musician here in the area. And um, that was a little strange with without listeners, staying on stage one time or here in my own studio. But uh, it's the only way we can uh, send music to the people, I think, in these times. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, um, <coughs> studio, uh, as a result, there are four albums, which we released, um, one with Michael Bruckner as uh, Bridge to Lula, and I made three albums with Etla Cornell from Philadelphia, with US, and uh, we called us uh, La Ponto Ensemble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ensemble is a strange name, I think so. It's um, Esperanto. Mm -hmm. And um, Ed wanted the name uh, Bridge Ensemble, and I think uh, Bridge to Imla and Bridge Ensemble is <laughs> too much bridges. <laughs> yeah, too, it's too similar. I, I, I took the Esperanto name, La Ponto Ensemble, and it's everybody uh, doesn't know uh, the language. Esperanto was a language. Uh, out of um, Romanian, French language and uh, Romanian. And it um, was uh, constructed as a, a, a overall language for all people. But I think um, nobody speaks Esperanto today. Yeah, but it's good to have the name from the music, right? So it's very <laughs> good stuff. I, very, I, I listened to the stuff yesterday too. It's very good stuff. How's the situation in Germany right now with the with the lockdown is, is open, or it's, it's now tours, I mean, concerts are being organized. Yeah, you can go to concerts when you have uh, the vaccination or you have uh, um, a test before. And um, not all the, the, the places uh, were, uh, over, were um, often for the people. You have take distance. But um, I think um, some concerts will, will, will go in the next uh, months. But uh, uh, normally, it's different here in Germany, uh, in Berlin or in Munich or in Frankfurt. There are different um, people who are ill with, with COVID. And there you have to, to watch to local restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very tough. Yeah, here in the United States, too. There's some states that are better than others, mm -hmm. healthy, and um, all the venues will open September 1st here, ah, mm -hmm. next month, and a uh, couple of weeks, actually. And then um, 
And uh, a lot of people have received the vaccine. Some people don't believe in the vaccine, and but most of the companies are are opening up. I've been go I'm an engineer. I'm a computer engineer. So I mm -hmm. I begin going to the office um, on daily already. So mm -hmm. it's kind of little by little going back to normal. But still, there are many people that you know mm -hmm. they are not that good. You know, so, so it's it's it's, it's difficult. I get my my second vaccination next week. Yeah, because I uh, had to go to hospital and there. My first uh, date for the vaccination uh, was cancelled. Yeah, I have st uh, I had stayed in hospital for six weeks. Wow! Wow! It was not not so good. I only uh, want to have a removal of the the gallbladder. Ah, uh, gotcha. But um, the surgery was wasn't um, wasn't very uh, easy. I have two big uh, cuts. And uh, they broke uh, something of of uh, the gallbladder, and I got two blood poisonings, and um, intestinal obstruction, and so I get a second uh, emergency surgery, and I have uh, to stay for one week in the intensive care unit. It wasn't very good for me. Wow! But now I'm I'm I'm. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, oh man, six weeks. It's tough, man. But you're you are you are alive and you're good. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I received my vaccine um about four months ago, five months ago. So mm -hmm. uh, er, er, around in March they the government here began distributing so everybody could go and it's free for everybody, even if you are you a citizen or not, everybody who goes there will be received. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, United States have is it's a very good country. It's help a lot of people out, you know. Mm. Have donated, mm. have donated vaccine to so many many countries around the world. Millions of vaccines, so it's it's good. Mm. And now yeah. Germany, you have enough enough uh, vaccines for oral, and you can go uh, every time to a vaccine uh, center or to your local doctor. Yeah, and that you you receive very right. easy to get the vaccination. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Were you born like in a musical family? Did you when you began playing <laughs> piano at the time before keyboards or mm -hmm. the, in in the equivalent of <clears throat> in high school or in Germany the gymnasium? Were you playing music when you were in high school? Or? Um, yes, a little bit. Um, my parents weren't very musical and uh, didn't play an instrument. Yeah, I also got in music very late. I think at the age of fourteen or fifteen. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, by chance, I heard a program um, on the radio about music from Berlin. It was music from Tangerine Dream, <laughs> Astra oh, yeah. Temple, and Equitation Free. Mm -hmm. It fascinated me so much that I not only bought all the records that, I, that were av available at the time, but I also wanted to make music like this. Yeah. Then I bought a cheap <coughs> organ, yeah. a little one with only some register. And started teaching myself a lot, but uh, then I bought uh, some textbooks and sheet music, and later I got to my first rock band. First, I played in a rock band, but uh, I always wanted to like uh, to to make electronic music. But at that time, nobody wanted to make electronic music here yeah, in, yeah. in the area, and. <clears throat> So I have to to make rock music, but uh, it was a nice group. We call it Finnegan's Wake, and we played cover songs from the Beatles, the Stones, and Vanilla Fudge, and some strange uh, groups. And I had a solo on a song from Vanilla Fudge with a great organ solo, and I jump on the organ and <laughs> wow. do crazy things. I had uh, distortion and make sound effects. And that was the one, the one song I, I can um, take my electronic de devices sure, and sure. make strange sounds. Where, where you guys play live in a yeah in what like a like a theater coffee show? Where, where which kind of venues? <clears throat> I think we had uh, over two hundred um, gigs, and uh, the strangest gig was our first gig. 
we had um, um, we had to rent a big hall <laughs> with another group and have yeah. him for the hall. And uh, there was a strong storm, and only a few people come to us. Oh, and, man. We, and we earned the six people thirty-five Deutschmarks, and uh, had to pay sixty Deutschmarks for the drinks <laughs> we had. <laughs> So it was a, a financial disaster. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, at the, at the time it was a lot of money, right? <clears throat> no, no, it wasn't. Uh, uh, it wasn't so much, but uh, you, you see, we, we earned money. We, we doesn't earn money. We have to pay. <laughs> but right. then uh, it could grow better, and uh, at uh, last we we get uh, over a thousand money for a gig. Yeah, like a thousand Deutschmark. Yeah. Thousand Deutschmark. This was a great, uh, a great mm. thing I saw. And, and uh, with, with this money, I could buy my first flute, sure. the second wow. instrument. I did. Yeah. Um, on piano, uh, later I get some lessons um, from a um, uh, jazz musician. I should uh, do some. Uh, Jazz improvisation, and I had to, to write melodies, uh, feed music, and uh, the, the piano teacher uh, um, looked at my, my, my sheet music and ah, said, oh, it's not jazzy, it's more exper experimental music, that okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I want more exp experimental music and I'm not so much in jazz. And on, on the flute, I get uh, classical uh, lessons by uh, by an accustomed music musician here in, in, in Hanau, near Frankfurt. Yeah, wow, that's pretty good. And you, so <clears throat> when you were, I don't know, 16, 17, 18, you, you, you decided that you wanted to be a musician and you went to high school, like university or, or was, or your, pa your parents told you, you can do whatever you want or was pressure for your family to go to, uh, you know, a university or, or, or forget about the music or? or. Um, I think um, at first I want to, to be an astronomer. I have some of my first uh, uh, wish. And then I want to um, get studied um, musical engineer, so, uh, tone engineer. Yeah. Uh, engineer. engineer. But um, I haven't trust my musical approaches and uh, I, <laughs> I studied business administration. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Something very different. Yeah. But um, in high school um, we had a programming computer. Yeah. And I learned Fortran and uh, on the university I learned uh, six other programming languages and uh, so my specialty was uh, computer programming. And then I, I, I uh, got a teacher diploma and I was a teacher in a vacational school and I teach bankers and um, computer assistants in programming and databases and some things. Yeah. Do you still do? No, I'm retired in oh, okay. 2019. I'm retired, and yeah. now I have uh, more time for, for the music. Yeah, now full time music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, here in the United States, <clears throat> in computer science, there is a lot of work. It, many companies are hiring people, so there's always opportunity to work here. So, mm. so for me, that's what I do for a living. Right, I'm a, I'm an engineer in mm -hmm. computer science too, and uh, but. Yeah. But music and the radios and the interviews is, is my my passion, you know. Yeah, but, uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't play any instrument. I don't know how to read music, but I begin I I, I listen many hours a day. Mm -hmm. From from jazz, from rock, from electronic music, depend on my mood and depend on the day of the week. I'm mm -hmm. always buying stuff and listen to all recording and so it's mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy. You know. I, I also hear a very wide range of music from baroque music to classical music yeah. to jazz and, and rock. I like uh, yeah. very, very many rock bands. Emerson Lake and Palmer was a great. Uh, of course, yeah. Group, I think. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. Um, 
Iron Butterfly was my first rock band uh, I liked very much. <laughs> really? Iron Butterfly? Oh, they are famous. Yeah. In the Vida. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That the long version, it's like 15 minutes long, right? This is a great organ solo and yeah. very, very good stuff, I think. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a famous one. And like I told you before, right, in the radios, I have like the soft rock radio, then mm -hmm. the jazz and rock, the electronics, so people can go back and forth between one and the other. And there's music for every for everyone there, you know, to, mm -hmm. to have the ability to listen to good stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I also hear is, uh, or what I also listen is um, avant garde music, uh, or you call it in, in the US, I think, um, uh, contemporary classical music like Stockhausen, Ligeti. John Cage and others. And uh, my solo project, Imaginary Landscape, Imaginary Landscape are some pieces from uh, John Cage. Okay. And um, I, like, I like the name, Imaginary and Landscapes. I always uh, like soundscapes and make uh, music like, like landscapes. That's right, yeah. Do you know, by the way, uh, Dead Can Dance? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Lisa, uh, Lisa, was, yeah. uh, uh, was a singer with, with uh, Klaus Schulze. I with think. Klaus Schulze, of course, yeah. And some records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they are very good. They're going to be touring here in um, October. So. Ah. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to, and then Genesis will come here in November. Oh. Mm -hmm. Of course, I will go to both. <laughs> ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got I got uh, The great concert I hear in Frankfurt was the concert of Crosby, Stillness and Young. Yeah, oh, it yeah. It was a very good concert. First, they have an uh, acoustic uh, part, and then they come back and play the electric part. And bo both was very, very exciting for me. Yeah, I got you. What can, <clears throat> so at the time when you were in, in high school, was um, Tangerine Dream was very popular, right? They, they were, I mean, they, Berlin is a, the capital of music electronic in the world. Everybody in Berlin, you know, played keyboards and, and electronics. But, but in Germany, it was different. I think uh, many of my uh, uh, friends uh, don't listen to Tangerine Dream. They don't like it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the American bands and the, and the English bands are preferred at that time. And only a, only a few people uh, we're listening to electronic music from, from Berlin. Really? I think Andrew Dream, Ashra Temple, or Klaus Schulze um, was uh, were famous in, 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 in France, in England, or in the States, but, but not so in Germany. Really? Wow, I'm surprised, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, Tanju and Dream, yeah, you're right. Outside, outside, outside Germany, and here in the United States, in Latin America too, yeah, Tangerine Dream was very popular, very, very popular from the early 70s, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, and then, of course, Peter Bauman, Klaus Schulze, mm -hmm. Ashra Temple, Manuel Bosch, you know, all, all the big names. There, there was, yeah, there were a lot of people listening to the music here mm -hmm. at the time, and it's early, late 70s, early 80s, you know? 70s. Yeah, so every time that Tangerine Dream play here in the United States, Mm. They stole a lot of records, a lot of concerts, so they did very well here. So they made a live album from the kicks in in, uh, in the US. Yeah, I think um, it was a double double album with um, I don't know um, from many kicks in the US to, from from the US tour. Yeah, they did very. Yeah, they did every time that they come here, they do at least 30, 30 shows a year. Mm. So. Because people people like the electronic music here, so I I saw um, so Tangent Dream well different people the, because Tangent Dream members have evolved over time, right? Jerome mm -hmm. was for a while, then of course Edgar, and then some people left, some you know some people gone. I uh, Iris come out, and then Linda, and and then many many others that I have. Mm -hmm. The opportunity to be so yeah i i like <clears throat> the early stuff was much better <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah they you know late 70s early 80s with um stratosphere and Ru rubicon and mm -hmm. you know, all the all the, the 
those albums, but then they went to commercial and they did mm. too many. The quality wasn't there, you know. They began doing soundtrack and and they did well, but they were releasing like a, a CD like every every three months or whatever. There was the quality wasn't there. There was they wanted to sell sell more stuff, but it wasn't that good, in my opinion. The first record uh, of Tension Dream I bought was in 1971, Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri, of course, yeah. Then, then I bought the others uh, back to, I think the life, the last uh, record I, I, I bought was uh, Life Miles. Yeah. And then uh, I um, didn't prefer Tension Dream anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have at home, do you have a... <clears throat> Like a big vinyl collection or big CD collection? Yes, I have uh, very, they're very, very much uh, LPs and a big record, a big CD collection from all stuff from from uh, electronic music, from from baroque. My, my my wife is a music teacher and is a very good uh, classical pianist. Oh wow! We have. Uh, some stuff of classical music, some stuff of, of jazz. We both like jazz, modern jazz yeah. very much, yeah. and, uh, and and rock, jazz hotel, yes, and all the old stuff, Genesis, uh, and uh, very very um, many LPs from from German crowd rock music, music, yeah. who go uh, can and I can very much, of course, and yeah. all the stuff. Uh, Kraftwerk, you like Kraftwerk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they're very, yeah, they're very famous. And uh, so you will begin listening to. Yeah, I have a um, a big. I was tell Miguel, I have where I live. I have four floors, so mm. uh, houses here instead of growing horizontally, right? They grow vertically. <laughs> so they, I have um, so a four floor, and I have a stereos in every floor, and. Mm -hmm. records everywhere so i have like a big 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 collection from everything from jazz from rock and i listen to a lot of different stuff so it's uh i'm always buying new stuff mm -hmm. so i i need a, i need like a i need a bigger place i need like a <laughs> i don't know like a, like a palace or you know i need like a, 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 a you know two places to get one for just for music so I run in, running out of room, but so much great music out there, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you gotta, you gotta. I need to buy like a castle in Germany or something. I put a, <laughs> and invite people over to listen to good music. Mm -hmm. Are are there castle for sale for real or no? No, as I said, don't think so. Here we have a, a castle nearby, but uh, I, I think it's uh, it's not to say. No, it's not not to say. <laughs> no for sale, no. No. <laughs> yeah, I will have to. I will have to. Hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully, we when I'm in um, in Germany soon, I will I will visit you. We'll get together with Miguel to we go to dinner or something. No, you know that will be that will be fun. All right. So um, I was listening to the album uh, Open World Live by you know the other name you used, the Imaginary Landscape, and. Um, you know, there was an ex. Obviously, it's an excellent album. So the question is, when when you play live, to which extent you guys use improvisation? You have mm. like a base that you mm. always use, and the rest you do it as you're doing it, or how? What's the creative process for people that play? You know, yeah, landscape we, or that kind of. We have some. Um basic background, I think, or some sequences. Yeah. Where we start to improvise, and um, on the other hand, there are some melodies we we had composed before, and it's a different uh, if I play a solo concert or with with Michael Bruckner or with with other people. With with Michael, we are very um, straight together. We have um, a basic construction, and Michael have a wonderful sequences. Yeah. And he, he, he told me normally the keys and the, the beats per minute. And I arranged at my home something and then we, we can play it live. And on the other hand, um, I, I'm in a group called uh, Ica Lounge and we doesn't fix anything. We improvise 
um, five uh, five hours, and nobody um, made some restriction. <laughs> and it's it's very interesting. Sometimes it got very strange because um, some people are not so good in, uh, in in knowing the keys or the, the changes uh, that is that were possible. And sometimes um, there are moments that are very very big and. We are always uh, uh, astonished about our musical uh, uh, things that's come out. And uh, with this group, I played, uh, I think, uh, 80 or, or 90 gigs. And we played on some festivals, uh, one in two times in Munich on a festival, yeah. two times in Heidelberg on a festival, and uh, one festival in Austria, in um, Innsbruck. And, uh, <clears throat> there are many people sometimes. We had uh, to play with 30 people in, in Munich, a big, <laughs> a big group, and other times we are only three. And um, really? wow. <laughs> it's very different. The outcome is very different. And, um, but it, it's so much fun to play with other, other people. And I think uh, to improvise is, is, yeah. is one good thing in music. You can use the, the language music, and when you um, when you can uh, trust another in the foregoing of the music, and you you make a response, and it's very great. It's it's a very beautiful moment. But mm -hmm. how do you know when to let's say you were play with Michael Bruckner and um, he goes to his piece? How do you know when? when to start when he's done you how you get you communicate when he's finishing three minutes and then you come in with, with a sequencer or whatever how how that is communicated how for the audience would it know that you know oh <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, I i know the, the the background stuff from michael and i know when when the changes are coming oh, okay i got and, you and then i i listened <laughs> to him and we, we take uh, contact and then I, I, I know it, it, it uh, always uh, goes very smooth. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you take over and then you do five minutes, whatever. You know. You start, and then he, he starts. And, and, yeah. and, yeah, and there are parts where I can, where I can use this strange instrument. What is that? It's a, it's an electronic wind instrument. Wow! Yeah. You can play it like this, like a saxophone or like like a flute. I have the fingering for the flute because I had lessons in flute playing, and it sounds very good. It's uh, because of the mouse piece. You can uh, play other things uh, than on keyboards, and it's a very uh, smooth sound, and and it's it's very nice for uh, going over Michael's uh, sequences. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's very, yeah. <laughs> and then how, how is the coordination when you guys play live, but from different cities, right? I mean, suppose that you, you were, you were in Frankfurt and Miguel was in Berlin. Is, is there a combination of play live for people from different cities, knowing the same room, right? No, um, on, or, on, on or case, we all come, we all come to, to, together and um, we, we, we love to play live and uh, <clears throat> it doesn't get much money with, with that uh, live playing and um, as a duo, it's not so so uh, complicated to to get to a, to a kick here in in Rhine Main area, and Michael is not so far away, so we can can make some some uh, yeah. some kicks here here in in the area, and um, <clears throat> we had two kicks with uh, Volker Lanko from Berlin, and um, he joined us here in the Rhine Main area. And he stayed overnight um, here in, 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 uh, in a hotel and we uh, got the money for his hotel and this was the fee for our gig. 
Yeah. So you guys get a little okay. So it covered the, the expenses, but you you you're doing it because you like the music. No, you don't make any. You're you know you yeah. break even, right? So yeah, <laughs> you you don't got make any money. How many people will attend any of these shows? Oh, uh, we haven't uh, not lot uh, uh, not a uh, not no. <clears throat> we had a lot of not lot listeners. I think uh, the biggest gig we had with the Eka Lounge were 800 people. Oh. And with, with uh, Bridge to Imla, I think um, almost 50 or uh, yeah, a lot more. No. Yeah, that's what is good. Right. Streaming live would be a good, a good way to mm -hmm. give a little money to the musician, you know, because they will charge. I don't know, $10 or whatever to listen to the, the live stream and you can get paid a little bit money that way, you know? So, mm. Because otherwise you need to put money out of your own pocket to cover, <laughs> to cover all the all the expenses and over time become expensive. Are you using with the records that you are releasing now, the CDs, but are you doing like a label release or you go on like a sales, uh, sell release albums? Oh, it's different. I I uh, had one uh, release on Syngate. Syngate, yeah, yeah. With Gillian. Uh, with Gillian, right? Yeah. You know, and uh, and the other things are on on Bandcamp and uh, with without a label. Mm -hmm. And this this uh, Bridge to Inla, our first record, uh, the Radiancy, was on a Dutch label, on Winterlight. And. Um, we had a very good um, mastering engineer, Robert Rich. You know him? Oh, I interviewed him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's very good too. He's very, plus, Robert is a very good person. Too, you know, mm -hmm. it's a very nice person. We had a good uh, contact to him, and he did the mastering very good for us. Mm. But on, but oh. on band, band camp, um, I, I, I think. Um, we uh, we got only some money, only thirty or forty records are sold, and um, it's not so much. Really, in everything, all the stuff the bank up, you know, not that many. Um, I think uh, Michael Bruckner uh, sells more records. Yeah, he got more. Right? But, uh, my records are not so uh, often sold. Yeah, and and what about Spotify? You get, you have a good audience in Spotify. Listen to. Um, I think um, Syngate put it on Spotify the records uh, yeah. from Syngate, and and the others uh, uh, pieces are not on Syngate. I think. Yeah. Wow. Because uh, for Syngate uh, with Gillian, there. Are, there are many, there's a lot of musicians there, right? Yeah, so there, mm -hmm. he has like a good bass. Yeah, I, I I don't know Gillian personally, but I exchange several email with him and every so often he send me stuff. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot, of a lot of new people I never even heard. Gillian mm -hmm. is, nice is a nice person. He uh, joined us as a kick here in, in my neighborhood and yeah. he was moving around and he's <laughs> very, uh, interested in our music yeah that's pretty good yeah hopefully i will maybe one day i will interview Gillian to see how the the process and how he mm. reach out to artists how people connect him if he if he have any doing any um any any you know the the and the admin aspect of the, the basic business right that i don't know how I buy CDs there, but I have no idea how we get there, right? So it will be good to understand the process, how the music is there. Do you, do you use your own um, design and uh, beat programming versus um, uh, preset or drum loops? Oh, um, <clears throat> I very often use uh, orchestral libraries from some uh, companies. Yeah. But other things, uh, so the normal electric electronic sounds, I program by myself. Yeah. But, but I like orchestral sounds and uh, 
which to Imla, the orchestral sounds uh, are all from me and uh, all those piano or the, the flute stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, on the electronic things, um, the drum loops I, I don't use. Uh, I, uh, I make my, my own sequences and uh, often I, I use a arpeggiator and play a chord and uh, um, take the hold function and play over it and yeah. improvise uh, on the sequence. A drum loops. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not good in drum uh, loop uh, programming. <laughs> I'm not a drummer. Yeah. I, I like more um, soundscapes or uh, pads and melody stuff. And um, I'm not so good uh, in, in uh, rhythmical things. Yeah, I got you. Right. Yeah, so I think uh, Mikael used a lot of, I uh, think uh, he, he likes the drum loop, the sequencer. Oh, you're frozen. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I listened to uh, a bridge to Imla, obviously with with our friend Mikael, uh, the cinematic ambient uh, duo. Um, you know, feel free to elaborate. In now that we are recording your friendship with uh, Mikael, you guys have worked in in several albums together, right? Can you hear me? Can you see oh, me? I couldn't, I couldn't really hear you. I think the picture is frozen. Yeah. Is, is, it, is it frozen now or no? Uh, I hear your voice, but, um, oh, you're yeah. back again. Okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. I was asking about- oh, I see um, you. As fresh, uh, a bridge to Imla with- uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I'm doing good, yeah. Maybe you cannot see me, but I can see you and hear you well. No idea why, but let me let me pause the recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did a pause and recording again. So I, what I was asking about um, uh, uh, a bridge to Imla with uh, Mikael Bruckner, uh, you guys are a cinematic ambient duo you know, feel free to uh, elaborate in your friendship with Michael and then with how many albums you guys have done together, that sort of thing. Uh, we've made five albums together. Yeah. And um, the first was in uh, 2017. Yeah. And the last was uh, this year. Yeah. Our last record, Lost, is, um, released in, 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 uh, in April or in May, I think so. Yeah. And you, you guys have, <clears throat> you mentioned that you guys have toured together a little bit, right? After the re after an album was recorded, you you like to, you know, play live and, and that kind of stuff. You guys have played band, play, have played live with, with Mikael, right? Have you? Yeah. Mm, yeah. We have some, some gigs together, yeah, and uh, it's not 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 very often. We only play two or th or three gigs in, in a year. I think so. Yeah. Do do you pre you are you you prefer to um, play live or more studio work? Is if you or both are 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 great. <laughs> uh, if you have the opportunity prefer, to play more. I huh? prefer to, to play live. Yeah. Um, and it's wonderful to play with other people, I think so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it hopefully, in, in you know. In, in the studio, um, it's, it's, an, it's another scene and you have to concentrate on the technique. And um, I'm not, uh, not, so, not so quick as uh, Michael in, in recording. I have to take my time to get a special uh, part to a piece and um, Michael is uh, very quick in recording and he had many albums uh, on Syngate and on Bandcamp and I have had I have to take my time yeah uh, uh, that's okay you know it's, uh, 
some yeah some people are quicker than other and uh, but you need to do it at your own pace you know? <laughs> some people yeah like tangerine dream was recording mm -hmm. an album uh, uh, every two weeks or something which is which is crazy you know the quality wasn't there you know so, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the the quality to be my for me and important right uh let's talk about uh la, la ponte ensemble it's a, it's a project with um with uh, clark cornell um you guys join together to create more it's different right so it's neoclassical and um, electronic music you know feel free to elaborate in in, in your um in your friendship and on all the albums that you work together with uh, e clark um <clears throat> The duo La Ponte Ensemble is very special for me. I think I met um, at Clark Cornell um, via internet. Mm -hmm. And we, we both like um, contemporary classical music. Yeah. For example, Ligeti, and we talked much about uh, strange sounds or clusters and all the stuff from uh, the avant-garde side. And um, so we, 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 uh, we had uh, some parts are very strange and some parts are more um, neoclassical. I have um, made some piano parts who are very um, um, classical. And then at, um, he's a very good editor, make some strange sounds uh, to this music and we mix it up together. And it's quite another style at, uh, as Bridge uh, Dreamer, I think so. And then seeing he's in, in uh, here in United States, Pennsylvania, right? I think he, he, he lives here in United States, right? How you guys can collaborate? Yeah, you... he, lives, he lives near Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So how you guys can collaborate? You send each other files? How, how does it work? How can you collaborate, you know, since you are in Germany, here's the United States, how you guys can collaborate? You you send each other files mm -hmm. and then he, he asks his stuff, he said to you, do you review it and you go back and forth? That's the way it works? Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we send files. Um, I, I sent file to, to Philadelphia and, and at, uh, looked at these files and, and um, it does some some editing editing or add some some musical stuff and then send it back and so we, we communicate via internet and it, it's, uh, it's going very well I think it's uh, it's a good thing to to meet over this uh, long distance absolutely right and you because you guys have done several albums together right Why it disappeared for a while? Uh, so you 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 tell me that you you send each other file back and forth. He you know you 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 do your piece. He does his piece. Then go back and forth until until the the piece and the particular album is 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 finished, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. You you have done how many albums have you done with him? Um, three albums. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, one, one on Syngate, the first one, yeah. and two we, we had on Bandcamp, and we are producing a new album, and um, this will be finished uh, next year, I think so. I got you. Have you guys played live? No, no, you have no. Not. No. <laughs> because we live in this, yeah. Because the distance is, is uh, too, too long, <laughs> and it's, I think it's, it's uh, in this time, it's, it's uh, also uh, very difficult to to go to another state without uh, full vaccination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully you will, the two of you, and they would make him with Michael Bruckner form like a trio. Oh, mm -hmm. it will be a Berlin, Berlin trio. That's mm -hmm. an, <laughs> although he's not, for, he's not German, he's, he's an American guy, but uh, would be good to, you know, put something together. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed, 
I I I um listen to uh, uh La Ponte Ensemble is is it was is very good. What, what if you if you look back in your career, what do you think you were your musical influences? Uh, the most influence come from um, Tangerine Dream, but on the other side, on uh, people like Ligeti, Stockhausen, and uh, the old electronic fellows from contemporary classical music. Yeah. I've um, bought many books uh, about um, Stockhausen or uh, 12, uh, 12 note technology and some strange stuff, stuff of, of uh, classic compositions and uh, sheet music of uh, Ligeti. And uh, I play flute, uh, um, a piece from Edgar Vares. And so um, most, uh, many influences are from this um, classical contemporary music. Wow, that's pretty good, man. What kind of music are you, you listening now? When, uh, you know, when you're at home or driving in the car or whatever, what, what kind of stuff you listen to? I um, love to hear uh, modern jazz. Yeah, modern jazz, yeah. Especially from, from Norway. Yeah. I like um, Niels Petter Malware. Of course. Uh, or um, uh, from, from Ireland. Uh, how call them? Uh, Olaf für Arnolds. Or um, many ambient musicians, but but also Bach and, and Beethoven. And um, on the radio, I hear also um, rock music from over the world, <laughs> from 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 Italy, from uh, <clears throat> from from England, from from the United States. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, you. Um... You listen to a lot when you are at home or when you you buy the CDs and you drive when you're driving or every a little bit of everything. Uh, most time I hear music um, home at home. At home, I have a good, very good headphone. Yeah. And I'm deeping, I'm, I'm diving in the music <laughs> with my headphones and shut my eyes and listen to the sound. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, of course. That's I do the same thing. That's the way to <laughs> to go block the whole world and put your headphone and, and listen and listen to the stuff. Man. Um it's you know, looking back in your career, you you know, you have played in some small venues, bigger venues, you know, in different countries. Uh is any particular concert that you look back and say, man, that's that's the best concert that I play on, on my life, you know, they, it can, it cannot get any better. Any, any particular concert that bring you memories? Oh, I think the two concerts are very, uh, are very good. One concert with the Eka Lounge. Yeah. At festival near Ludwigshafen. <clears throat> it was a very uh, atmospheric scene. It was um, outside in, in middle of Norway, <laughs> Norway, and we have played with three people only, and we wow. are very close together and we had sounds, wow, it was very, very interesting and exciting for me. And the other very good concert was with uh, Michael Bruckner, Volker Lanko and uh, Ralph Baumgertl. Gertl. And we played near, near Mainz in a, in a little hall. And uh, the first part we, uh, yeah, uh, we, we play as uh, Bridge to Imla, only Michael and me, and then the other joined us. And we had a very good improvisation and it uh, went into very special things. Uh, we had uh, Volker Lanko who was playing a percussion and it, it, uh, we had a part with very um, uh, ethnic uh, percussion sounds and of, we were in a very other scene and it was uh, another side of ambient, a new, scene, a new side of ambient. And it was very great. I uh, enjoyed it very much. 
good for you, man. So good for you. So what are I have other two questions. So what are you, what are your plans for the 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 near future for the next three months or six months? Hopefully playing live. You have other records that you albums that you're working on. Yeah, I, um, we have to finish uh, the next album of La Ponto Ensemble. Yeah. And uh, I have invited a very good drummer to join us. And I'm very interested if he uh, can get some new parts to our pieces. And he's a very good drummer. He, he played with uh, people from um, Marilyn Manson, from... Uh, Phil Bronner, a, jazz, a German jazz musician, and um, so Arvin Arset, I will Arvin Arset, yeah, and wow, his, and his yeah. other great uh, musicians. And he he's uh, not only a good drummer; he makes electronic sounds with his drums, and he added uh, the rhythmic part with strange sounds. And he's uh, very good uh, in uh, in this um, special technique with his electronic drum set. When, when is that going to be uh, released, do you know? Uh, I think uh, the release will be in February next year. February, yeah. It's on the label uh, uh, Cyclical Trains. Cyclical Trains, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I know that. At Argentina, Argentina yeah. in the label, I think. Mm -hmm. I have interviewed um, a couple of people from um, the Cyclical Trains. These are all of this, very good people, yeah, these. It's good. I interview a couple of people from the label, and it's good, good music, good music there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's always great music ev everywhere, man. It's uh, been um, in the major record label or in Syngate or in Cyclic Dreams or self releases or whatever. I'm always, I'm always listening to good stuff. And then, um, so the last question: where, where, feel free to elaborate on where the our listener can buy your music. So feel free to name your. Your website, your uh, you know, Badcamp web page and everything. Uh, my home page is imaginary minus landscape. Yeah. Dot de trip forward Germany, but uh, this, this home page is only in German. Yeah, I'll get you. Uh, right. You can listen to to my pieces on Bandcamp. Yeah. And on Bandcamp, uh, you can find um, one album on Syngate. Yeah. It's, it's the 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 album. Um, Nothing left behind. Nothing left behind. Very yeah. Dark ambient uh, album, <laughs> and uh, on my Bandcamp album, uh, Bandcamp site, uh, Imaginary Landscape. I got you. Or uh, you can get some pieces for free on SoundCloud. Yeah. And uh, you have to look for Imaginary Landscape. Gotcha. Yeah, and I, when I uploaded the ray, the link to the radio. <clears throat> are going to be put in the links for you so people can buy your music. So. Mm -hmm. And I always do that so people, you can benefit a little bit and hopefully people will buy in, uh, the music. The, well, that's all I have, Hans. I'm quite sure we'll stay in contact because I'm I'm very interested in getting some of your music, buying some of your music too. Uh, so I can take the music and play it on the radio and, and for my own benefit, I, I want to always listen to great music. So it was very nice talking to you, Hans. Oh, have, thank you, you know, have you. a great afternoon there in uh, in Frankfurt, and then hopefully we'll meet between now and the end of the year. I was telling Michael that I, I between now and December I need to take like a week off of work and then fly. And people have invited me in in Berlin, in <laughs> Munich, in Frankfurt. So I don't know how to, I would need to make many trips. You know, yeah, you're, you're a German tour. <laughs> a, a German tour. That's right. Yeah, learn some German words in between. You know, and and visit my family ancestor in, in Munich. Uh, there is a nice grave they always go in Munich. Mm -hmm. And then go definitely in Berlin. I want to see all the famous electronic, mm -hmm. you know, record store and, and that kind of stuff would be fun. It was very nice talking to you, Hans, and we'll stay in touch, man. I will send you a, 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 an email shortly. Thank you very much, Claudio. Thank you. Take it easy. Thank you. <laughs> huh? We will meet at Frankfurt. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, 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 we need to meet with Olaf too. You know, he he gave me a book for an um, autobiography of uh, Klaus Schulze. So mm. I, I told him, don't send it. Wait for me there. I would be we were right. <laughs> it's an incentive for me to go there. <laughs> I mean, you guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Take it easy. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.